issues and various problems and they know like we all know that we are a faithful God that we are a God that cannot fail that your power is here tonight and you are going to manifest your power on behalf of everyone without exception Therefore, Lord, we're praying. You roll the mountains of your people away tonight in Jesus' name. Your people will not carry sickness back home. They will not carry problems back home. You break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. Put testimony in every mouth. Joy in every heart. Answers to every prayer. Answers to every prayer. Answers to every prayer. Confirm it tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Here we have a good introduction to the ministry of Jesus Christ, the summary of the ministry of Christ. Because everywhere he went, there was a miracle. Everywhere he went, problems were solved. Everywhere he went, souls were saved. Everywhere he went, miracles happened. And that's the way God, the Almighty, approved him among the Israelites of those days. And in the same way that God approves him today, his name carries miracle. His word transfers miracle and the prayer we pray in the name of Jesus brings miracle upon every life notice in that verse 22 miracle number one wonders number two signs number three miracles today wonders today signs today in Jesus name Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 I'm reading here from verse 5. Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Remember, where Christ is, there is power. Where Christ is, there is transformation. Where Christ is, heaven will come down. He preached Christ unto them. Christ the Savior, Christ the Healer, Christ the Deliverer, Christ the Mountain Mover, Christ the Miracle Worker. Verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. What did they hear? What did they see? Miracles. What are you seeing tonight? In your life, what are you going to see tonight? Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And then in verse 7, it begins to describe for us the kind of miracles that happened. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many. They will not remain in your life. The many that were possessed with them, and many taking with pulses, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy. And there was great joy in that city. Tonight it will happen to you. Because that is the word of the Lord. That's where Christ stays. And whatever prayer we pray in the name of Jesus will always produce miracles. Acts chapter 19. I'm reading here from verse 11. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And tonight, he'll work special miracles in every life. Look at verse 12 there. So that from his body were brought unto the sick 
handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them out of them out of you evil will go out evil power will go out works of darkness will go out all those strongholds in your life they'll be subdued tonight in jesus name hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 hebrews chapter 2 reading here from verse 4 it tells us in verse 4 god also bearing them witness it's a work of god he specializes in that he does that every time he glorifies the name of Christ by working miracles in the lives of people that call upon him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles. You have those three words there again. Signs, supernatural signs, wonders, supernatural wonders, and miracles, supernatural miracles. And then it says, and with the gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will that's the will of god tonight this power night and he'll do wonders in every one of our lives in jesus name he will do it in my life i said he'll do it in my life you will have a testimony i said you will have a testimony it must happen tonight tonight we're looking at the message experiencing god's miracle working power experiencing god's miracle working power and there are three points we're going to look at before we pray number one the possibilities of god's mighty power no doubt you know like i know like everybody knows that god is mighty and god is powerful and there are great possibilities when we think about what god does how God does it, and when God does it, and the people he does it for, he does supernatural things, and he works miracles. And he says, I am God, I change not. His power has not changed. He's still mighty today, as he was mighty in the past. And that mighty power of the Lord tonight will be manifested in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. The possibilities of God's mighty power point number two the partakers of god's miracle power the partakers those who partake those who are part of this those who say i'm going to be a participant tonight i'm not just hearing the word the word is going to penetrate into my life and it's going to produce miracle the words you are hearing tonight will produce miracle in your life in jesus name the partakers, those are people that don't just want to come and be an observer. I just see other people giving testimony, other people receiving. They say, I must be a partaker. You'll be a partaker. Or are you there? I said, you'll be a partaker. You'll not just be hearing other people getting into it. You'll get into it yourself in Jesus' name. The partakers of God's miracle power. Point number three, the possession of God's mountain moving power. The possession. What do we do? How do we pray? How do we approach God? How do we ask him? How do we trust him? How do we hold on to the promises so that we can be partakers of God's mountain moving power? One, two, three, and you've got it. You're going to be a possessor tonight, a partaker tonight. Whatever it takes, however we have to pray, to make sure that you don't go away empty-handed tonight, it must happen. Point number one, the possibilities of God's mighty power. We need to understand that, that God is so powerful and that God is so mighty. And there are great possibilities as we think about what God can do on the basis of what he has done. And we know that he has not changed, and we know that his God, he changes not. 
we're looking at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, I read from verse 35. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. How do those great possibilities happen? How do they come in our lives? How do we experience the great mighty power of God that works undeniable miracles in our lives? We're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. I want you to understand that that is not limited to Mary because we know that today the Holy Ghost is still active in the church and it comes upon sanctified believers and here it says the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee when that power of the highest overshadows you sickness will have no place to stay evil will have no place to hide and darkness will have no place to stay in your life in jesus name the power of the highest shall overshadow thee Therefore also that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. With God, you come in relationship with God. You are reconciled with God. You are abiding in God. And you are praying unto God. And there is no division. There is no demarcation. There is no gulf and there's no separation between you and God and you are abiding in God. You want to understand that God to whom you have come today, that God in whom you believe today, nothing shall be impossible. Think about every challenge in your life, every problem in your life, every predicament in your surrounding. Think about all those things that look impossible as you look at God tonight. As you see God tonight, as you believe God tonight, with God, nothing in your life shall be impossible. As you look at your family, I have that need in the family. With God, nothing in your family shall be impossible. You're looking at some of the weight upon you and some of the pressures upon you and some of the challenges you face. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Give me a good, good amen. amen. Verse 45 And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is he. Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance. In your life tonight, there shall be a performance. I said, in your life tonight, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Everything you are hearing today, it will turn to performance in your life. The promise will turn to performance. The verses of scripture will turn to performance. Everything the Lord is telling you tonight, everything the Lord is revealing to you tonight, it turns to performance in your life. It will be performed in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It will happen. Those tears must be dried up today. Those challenges must go today. Those mountains must move away today. And those sicknesses and infirmities, everything must vanish away today. The weakness of your life, all that must vanish away today. And all the impossibility, I can't do that. I can't go there. I can't sustain that. I don't know how, what to do with this. All the confusion of your life, everything is gone tonight. Because there will be a performance in your life. Well, there will be a performance in my life. Matthew chapter 19, we're reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, and we're reading from verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God, tell me, but with God, let heaven hear your voice. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Even things that, you know, uh, look impossible to people who are experts 
are people who are very high and people who are mighty in the world all those things that you've taken here you've taken there and taken there tonight all those things the lord will solve them in jesus name we're going to the southern part of africa namibia in particular and then lesotho and then we're going to zambia in uh, namibia when we got there there was a this thing that was impossible with men this child had been born normally and at the age of four months the tongue came out really out and it was outside the mouth and there was nothing they could do they went to all the hospitals in the country in namibia and there was nothing that could be done with men this is impossible and then eventually they thought they'll go to South Africa. And they contacted uh, hospitals in uh, South Africa. And they said they should uh, bring the child. Meanwhile, at the time that they were asking for this, the parents were looking for money. And so they put the picture in the newspapers. And the government of Namibia was ready to help the child. And they said whatever the operation will cause that the government of their country will foot the bill and so money was not a problem now the government was involved they took the child to south africa and the uh, doctors examined the child and they said there was nothing they could do there was no way for them to perform any operation and make the tongue go back into the mouth with men this is impossible and so the parents and the friends of uh, that family, they contacted our uh, national overseer. And he said, please, as the GS is coming, let us, uh, you know, take this child to the GS so that the, the GS will pray directly for the child. And he said, well, I don't know how the program will look like. I cannot promise you yet. And they were there a great day. Like today, day of power, day of authority. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. And the overseer had not spoken to me yet. He was waiting that when we finish, he'll take permission if we can, if they can bring the child, and then we'll pray for the child. But you know what? We finished the message, gave the altar call, and quite a number of people gave their lives to the Lord. And now we began to pray, and we mentioned the name. What name? I said, what name? While we were still praying, I normally tell them when you hear the final amen, check up yourself, the miracle will be there. We had not even said the final amen, the tongue went back. And after that crusade, after that crusade, uh, the, you know, the overseer there, or the media people there, they went to the village, they went to the family, they went to the government officials, they wanted to check up the root cause of this problem and all the things that they showed in the papers, and then they contacted all the hospitals and the experts where they had gone, where it was impossible, but now they saw that what man could not do, God has done. In your life, what man cannot do, God will do. Power in your life today. Authority in your life today. Every yoke in your life is broken today in Jesus' name. With men, this is impossible. But with God, tell me now, all things are possible. You will not cry again. You will not shed tears again. All your tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. We're looking at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm reading here from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32. And I'm reading from verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. By thy great power, he made the heaven, he made the earth, by his great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee there is nothing too hard for thee praise the lord that problem in your life is solved tonight look at verse 19 great in counsel and mighty in word. that's god is great in counsel is great in understanding and is mighty in works. Look at verse 27. 
in verse 27 behold i am the lord the god of all flesh is there anything you had for me what are you crying about there why are you anxious why are you kind of uh, your heart is palpitating as if uh, how will this happen how will this happen it must happen tonight miracle must happen to you tonight deliverance must happen to you tonight total transformation rejuvenation must happen in your life tonight in jesus name isaiah isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 i'm reading here from verse 28 isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth that's the measure of his power if you're going to think of the power of the almighty god that's how you evaluate the power of the almighty god is so mighty and there is nothing he cannot do there is nothing he will not do in your life is the creator of the ends of the earth faith he fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faith you have it tonight i said you have it tonight courage you have it tonight boldness you have it tonight strength you have it tonight stamina you have it tonight enablement you have it tonight he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might increase their strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but tell me but tell me what are you doing now i said what are you doing now instead of being there and being there and uh, being in the market you are waiting upon the lord he must reward you tonight he must bless you tonight they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles no tree no forest no river no stumbling block no hurdle will hinder your forward movement because you will mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary i didn't hear you and you know some people some people they say you know as you get old you cannot stand up as you get old you cannot even walk straight as you get old you cannot run they don't remember the scriptures as you get older you'll be stronger as you get older you'll be healthier as you get older every race the lord has set before you to run you will run in jesus name it says over here they shall run i will run i said i will run because the scripture is going to be fulfilled in every one of our lives in jesus name old age will not keep you down old age will not destabilize you old age will not weaken you well we're talking of old days some people at 34 some people at 45 some people at 49 it's like they're already 90 years of age all those things they wiped away your life tonight in jesus name because you were on, you will not be weary. I walk a little and I get tired. I walk a little. It's like I should find somewhere to sit down. All that weariness, all that fainting, everything will vanish away from your life tonight in Jesus' name. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will not faint. I said, You will not faint. Why do we say that? Because God says it's going to quicken your mortal body. It's going to strengthen your mortal body. And it's going to give you supernatural strength. And from tonight, you'll have a kind of strength you have never got in your life in Jesus' name. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3. 
And we're reading here from verse 20. It says in verse 20, Now unto him that is able. Is your God able? Yes. Able to heal cancer? Yes. Able to heal ulcer? Yes. Able to heal your blindness? Is your God able, able to do the impossible in your life? Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above, praise God, above, praise God, above all that we ask or think. Everything you are asking tonight, God will say, I'm going to do everything to start with. And then he's going to add something on top. Then he's going to multiply your blessing. Basic miracle. Yeah. Supernatural miracle. Yeah. Added miracle. Yeah. Multiplied miracle. Yeah. Because now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are causing according to the power that worketh where? According to the power that worketh where? Walkers in us, it will walk, it will walk in you. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Possibilities, everything is possible tonight. Miracle possible tonight. Salvation possible tonight. Transformation of heart and life possible tonight and healing, deliverance, authority that breaks every yoke possible in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Now point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the partakers of God's miracle power. The partakers of God's miracle power. Well, you know, sometimes uh, when I preach, I kind of make an outline in such a way you will remember because i want you to remember how can i be a partaker because tonight you are going to be a partaker what can i do who which example can i look at that i will know that he was a partaker and if i pray like him if i act like him if i live like him if i believe the word of god like him i too will be a partaker thank god the next time i see you face to face you will tell me pastor i was a partaker i said i was a partaker where is the sister there partaker where's the brother there partaker you'll be a partaker in jesus name the partakers of God's miracle power. Miracle M. Moses. I, Isaiah. R. Ruth. A. Abraham. C. Caleb. L. Lazarus. E. Elijah. Those were partakers. There's no doubt about that. All those people I mentioned their names now that spell out the word miracle. They were partakers of God's miracle power. Look at Moses. I was looking at Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. I was reading from verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 34. We're looking at verse 10. Be a partaker of God's miracle power. God's miracle working power. Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, reading from verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Have fellowship with the Lord. Know him face to face. Let him know you face to face in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and is all his land and in all the mighty hand and in all the great terror which moses showed in the sight of all israel literally everywhere moses went miracle everything he said produced miracle every prayer he prayed produced miracle he was a partaker of god's miracle power 
How did that happen in his life? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. You don't fear if you're going to receive faith because you know your God is able. Your God is mighty. You don't fear Pharaoh. You don't fear Nebuchadnezzar. You don't fear sickness. You don't fear enemy. You fear nothing. And tonight, fear out of your life in Jesus' name. For he endureth as seeing him who is invisible. When Pharaoh was there, he didn't see Pharaoh. He saw God. He saw God who is able to conquer Pharaoh. All the problems, all the challenges, he didn't look at them. He was looking at his God that was invisible to the people because he saw him that was invisible. Now, I say, partakers of God's miracle power. Partakers of God's miracle power. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 6. And I read from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from verse 5, here I say a mage, a confession. And from that confession, he had the sanctification experience which the Lord Jesus Christ provides for everyone today. In verse 5, he says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which had taken with tongues from, uh, with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves and thine iniquity is taken away that's the sanctification and i seen purged and i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us everybody answer then said i then said i here am I, send me. When well, you are yielded to the Lord like that, submissive to the Lord like that, giving to the Lord without any reservation, your heart, your life, your skill, your talent, everything you've got, here am I, send me. Miracle must go through your life. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel. I and the sons and the children whom the Lord had given me were for signs and wonders in Israel. It will be so in your life in Jesus' name. R is for Ruth. Look at Ruth chapter 1. How do we become partakers? Partakers of God's miracle power, we have the courage of Moses that saw enemies, and but he saw God bigger, greater, higher, mightier than all those enemies because he saw him as God has seen the invisible. And then like Isaiah, all the depravity of sin, all the root of sin, all that is burnt up, all that is taken up, and you are totally submissive, and you are totally given, surrendered unto the Lord. You become partakers of the miracle power of God. It will happen from tonight. Ruth chapter 1. In Ruth chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When you are that committed to the Lord. 
consecrated to the Lord. And you say, I'm not turning right. I'm not turning left. I'm not looking back. I'm not going to allow any challenge or any need to stop my journey halfway. You must experience miracle. Ruth chapter 3 from verse 10. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter. Talking to Ruth. For thou I showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people know that thou art a virtuous woman. When you keep your virtue, when you keep your righteousness, when you keep the character of the Christian, and nothing will sway you to this side or sway you to that side. You are steadfast and you are firm and you are courageous and you are uncompromising. God's miracle power will work in your life. Amen, amen. Abraham now, Abraham, we're looking at Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, you believe. I said you believe. You will not allow a shadow of a doubt to be in your heart. And whatever the problem, whatever the threatenings, Whatever the challenges, you just keep on saying, yes, I believe. And it says, even God, who quickness the dead, and call it those things would be not as though they were. You're always saying, I have it. And you can say it now, I have it. I said, I have it. Before you see the manifestation, you know there's going to be a performance, and therefore you're saying like Abraham, I have it, you're going to have it. Who against hope? believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be so shall thy answer be so shall the miracle be so shall the desire be fulfilled and being not weak in faith this how to be a partaker being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he will not consider all those natural frailties. Old age, no consideration. Weakness, no consideration. Deadness of any part of the body, no consideration. Resurrection power will work in your life. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith giving glory to God. As we're going back home tonight, giving glory to God. As we're going back tonight, singing the praises of the Lord. As you are singing, as you are rejoicing, as you are giving glory to God, when the praises go up, the answers will come down. And being fully persuaded in verse 21, fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. All the promises we are reading is able to perform in your life in Jesus' name. I'm coming to now Caleb. Caleb, somebody help me shout Caleb. Look at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 30. Partakers of God's miracle power. You see, there are people, they say, okay, we're just talking about partakers and a partaker. If you're going to be a partaker, these are the partakers. Look at Moses, that's a partaker. Look at Isaiah, that's a partaker. Look at Ruth, that's a partaker. Look at Abraham, that's a partaker. And now Caleb, I'll be like Caleb. I can't hear your voice. The Lord will honor your faith. He will honor your commitment. He will honor your faithfulness in Jesus' name. And look at chapter 13 and verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. 
Look up here for a moment. You know something? There are some Christians. In fact, it looks like almost all the Christians, they flow with the river. They flow with the weak people. And they flow with the people that don't have any conviction. They flow with the people that say, we cannot do it. This is too much for us. How do they expect us to overcome all those giants? We saw them. They're so tall. They're so big. And they're so mighty. And we saw them. And when we looked at ourselves, we were like grasshoppers before them. And there are some Christians who want to see other people crying. They start crying. They don't even know what they are crying about. But you know, he is crying, she is crying, and they are crying. Once they see people, and they're going down and meandering, and going the way of least resistance. There's no self-denial. There's no self-sacrifice. There's no personal conviction. And once they see them like that, they're like them. You will not be like that. Dare to stand and dare to stand alone and dare to take a commitment and to say, here is where I stand. I'm going to be different from the rest of them. Miracles will never stop in your life. Bastachi, Bastachi and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. That's a man of faith. All the other people said, no. He said, yes. All the other people said, we cannot. He said, we can. We can. I said, we can. Make it personal. I can. I can do all things. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Many people have forgotten their convictions. Uh, it's like, you know, whatever the majority is saying and whatever the crowd is saying and whatever the multitude is saying, that's what they say. And whatever the multitudes are doing, that's what they do. They cannot have any backbone to say, here is where I stand. But from today, from tonight, you will stand. You will have a backbone. And you will be able to say, whatever other people do, others may, I cannot. You will stand. Chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 24. Chapter 14 of Numbers, we're looking at verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein too he went and the seed shall possess it this miracle power we're talking about it will affect your life it will raise up your wife it will lift up your husband it will bless your children and if jesus tarries years and years and years to come you'll still be having the benefit of the faith we're talking about even tonight in jesus name Joshua chapter 14. In Joshua chapter 14, I'm reading here from verse 6. We're looking at Caleb, the kind of mighty art, and what sustained him, and what made miracle working power to work effectively in his life. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, and Caleb, tell me his name. If you're going to be like that, tell me out aloud. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me. Concerning me. He spotted me out. Concerning me. He separated me. Concerning me. He identified me because I have another heart. Concerning me. And thee in Kadesh Barnea, 40 years old. I was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. I didn't follow the crowd. I didn't sway with the crowd. I was not swayed by the crowd. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I but I, say for yourself now, but I, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. 
And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever. When you have this page we are talking about, it will be a benefit to all your converts, to all your children. And then he goes on, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. The Lord will keep you alive. I said, the Lord will keep you alive. You know, there's some people that are trying to find out, how will I walk, how will I do when I become older? I'm uh, 61 now. If I become 68, 70, 73, how will I stand? How will I sit? Because I see some people, once they're 73, 75, then they cannot even talk, they cannot see, and then they cannot, they're trying to feel their way. Are you going to be like that? You'll be strong. Somebody there said you'll be strong. And the power of the Lord will work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, tell me, First call, I'm five years old, 85 years of age. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. The Lord must renew your strength today. The Lord must energize you today. All those things that weaken you in your body, everything must be driven away today. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, somebody there, now therefore. Now therefore. Look at what follows, tell me, tell me. Say it aloud. Say it firmly. Give me this mountain, for thou hadest in that day how that the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, he will be with you. Then I shall be able, at 85, then I shall be able, at 85 years of age, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him. And I bless you. And I prophesy it's your life. And I say you will be strong. I say you will be fruitful. I say that all the weakness that have come upon your life, they will go back to where they came from. And Joshua blessed him and gave Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, unto this day. Because, because, because that he followed the Lord God of Israel. L for Lazarus. L for Lazarus. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 39. John chapter 11, verse 39. Jesus said, Take care with the stone. If you're going to be a partaker of God's miracle power, when you're giving up and you're buried Lazarus, and you're buried your dream, and you're buried your prospects, and you're buried your assignment, and you're buried everything, and you put a stone on it because it's dead. The dreamer is dead. The dreamer is about to die. And there is no hope. 
and there is no future. And we're all crying. If you had been here, my dream would have been sustained. And you put a stone there tonight. Take up that stone. A new life is coming. Resurrection power is coming. Encouragement is coming. And newness of life, revival, renewal, restoration is coming to you tonight. Jesus said, take here away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And therefore he had been dead for this. Jesus said unto her, said not I unto thee, my brother there, that if thou wouldest believe tonight, Sister, if thou wouldest believe tonight, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then, then, verse 41. Then, then, what are you going to do tonight? I said, what are you going to do tonight? Then they took away the stone. And then it says, from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hast heard me the Lord has had Jesus concerning you tonight and I knew that thou hearest me always but because of the people which stand here I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, say it now, Lazarus, come forth, you will come forth. The power of God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. I told you, we've been going around to the, some countries in Africa and some states over here in Nigeria. This uh, daughter brought her mother, hands paralyzed, feet paralyzed, and they carried her literally to the crusade in the evening, just uh, less than one month ago. And then, as we were praying, we closed our eyes. And that daughter closed our eyes. And remember, the mother was just there, almost lifeless. Hands could not do anything. Legs could not do anything. And they had to be carrying her to go to the toilet. They had to be carrying. Everywhere she went, they had to carry her. And this time, I told them, when you hear the final amen, it's going to happen. And I'm telling you tonight, as you hear the final amen, you are delivered. And you are set free. And then we are praying. We are praying, praying in Jesus' name. And those who are blind, and those who are deaf, and those who are insane, and this and this, oh Lord, heal them. And the people said... And then we said the final amen. And the daughter opened her eyes. She couldn't find her mother. Because the mother, during the prayer, rose up. During the prayer, started walking. During the prayer, hands all right, feet all right. And then she was running about. And daughter said, Mama, Mama, where are you? And Mama was up here. As Mama was giving testimony, the daughter ran and said, That's my mother. That's my mother. Miracle miracle and it is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus name take ye away the stone take ye away the stone there is no hindrance in your way tonight because everything is going to be done in Jesus name M for Moses I for Isaiah R for Ruth A for Abraham C for Caleb L for Lazarus E for Elijah. There's going to be an Elijah in the house today. We're looking at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I'm reading here. I'm reading here from verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And the prayer of faith shall deliver the sick. 
and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Forgiveness for everyone tonight. Salvation for everyone tonight. Restoration for everyone tonight. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The prayer, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Availeth, not just a little, availeth, tell me, much. Elias, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. We're going to pray tonight. I said, we're going to pray tonight. All those problems of three and a half years, seven years, 30 years, those problems will vanish away in Jesus' name. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. It's going to happen tonight. Number one, the possibilities of God's mighty power. Number two, the partakers of God's miracle power. Number three, the possession of God's mountain moving power. I possess tonight. I said I possess tonight. Your voice is weak. I possess tonight. The possession of God's mountain moving power. Your mountain will move. The mountain of your family will move away. The mountain in your place of work will move away. Poverty as a mountain will move away. Sorrow as a mountain will move away. Disaster as a mountain will move away. All those things who don't know where they're coming from, they always come, they always come. Uh -uh, today, we block the way for them. They will not come in Jesus' name. And look at, look at this. In a, we're looking at a Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, that unbelief will vanish away tonight. Unbelief destroys. Unbelief hinders our progress. Unbelief makes us to just keep crying and crying, regretting and then complaining. But all that will vanish away tonight. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, which mountain? I said, which mountain? This mountain. Any mountain before you tonight will speak to that mountain. Move, it will have to move. Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And it shall remove. The one who never lied said, it shall remove. The one who has faith and did not doubt, he said, it shall remove. Your mountain will move tonight. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You know the problem of people, they hear a message like this after hearing the message, instead of going back home and underlining all the words they've heard, all the verses we have read, and then saying it over and over and over again, nothing shall be impossible unto me. When I pray, nothing shall be impossible unto me. Whatever I desire, nothing shall be impossible unto me. And whatever I stand against, nothing shall be impossible unto me. Instead of saying that, they go back to the old song. It's not an easy road. We're walking to heaven. The problems are so many. And we pilgrims on the way, I pray I will not die by the way. I thought we settled that already here on Thursday. It is settled already. Change your prayer and change your outlook and change your confession. From now on, nothing shall be impossible unto me. I said nothing shall be impossible unto me. You'll have what you say. I said you will have what you say. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And we're reading from verse 20. 
Matthew chapter 21, reading from verse 20. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, that's all it requires, If ye have faith and doubt not, I will not doubt. How can you doubt? I will not doubt.